And I don't want you all to be fooled by my excitement right now. Um, it's kind of bittersweet. We're living in the best of times. And at the same time, today is a, a day of mourning for me and for my family. And even for many who, um, even like yourself, were affected by the ministry of Bishop Eddie Long. And it's 3.27 a.m. on Sunday, January 15, 2017, when he expired in time and stepped back in eternity. And we're sitting there at the house like, wow, you're funny. Because <laughs> a Coretta Scott King would lay hands on you and, and call you son. And a Bernice King would serve in the house and in the ministry as an elder. You would pick up the torch and, and, and run like so many with what the civil rights leaders were doing 20, 30, 50, 70, 80 years ago. Ain't it funny you would transition on the birthday of Dr. Martin Luther King? And even now as we're praying for those uh, indicator family of Bishop Quincy Carswell who even transitioned this week. Mm -hmm. And we're celebrating the life of John Lewis who came out and stated he has pancreatic cancer. My dad was so freaking private. He didn't want nobody to know that that's what he had. <laughs> the Superman ego syndrome as you're talking about that you're working through. But y'all had a very unique and peculiar relationship. Um brother-sister relationship, a legacy relationship. As we said, we're, we're tied by more than just being African Americans. And you have walked with me through many things as, as somebody who's many steps ahead of me in this march called life and, and being second generation. I'm saying a bunch right now. You catch the spirit of what I'm saying. Um, I just want to hear from you and how you're feeling today and just some of your thoughts even about his life and the impact that he had in his 63 years on this earth. You know, the first time um, I heard your father um, was uh, probably in 1989. Mm -hmm. um, I came to visit New Birth. I was at my home church, Ebenezer Baptist Church. Um, and I distinctly remember that um, he had a sound mm -hmm. and a message that was different than most that I had ever heard. Um, and uh, at that particular time, I had no idea because <laughs> it was like, what, 12 years later before I connected uh, with New Birth mm -hmm. um, that I would connect with him and, and New Birth. Um, he, he really awakened something in people mm -hmm. about who we really are uh, and it seems like there's a void of that now Boy. Um, in, in the uh, in the in at least in our nation mm -hmm. I can't speak about other nations um, your father said something that was really interesting I don't take it some I said it to somebody the other day and they said oh he cursed you all no I didn't take it that way because I, un I understood because of where I am now he said, y'all going to have a difficult time going anywhere else. Mm -hmm. um, and that's true. I listen, I listen, and this is no secret <coughs> against every man and woman of God because I respect all of them. Um, but that sound of the kingdom, those teachings of the kingdom, that thing that elevated you to understand your citizenship and your right as a king in the earth. Right. Yes, ladies too because it's positional, it has nothing to do with male, female, um, as a king, um, is what he tapped into for so many of us. Um, and so we thank God for his legacy, we thank God for his life, um, and he was doing some revolutionary things. Um, and uh, I remember when he talked about, um, we, don't, we don't come to take sides, we come to take, take over. over. Um, and I don't, know where, I don't know where the body of Christ is now in terms of really representing that kind of authority 
I mean, my father wrote about in his letter from the Birmingham jail, you know, about having that revolutionary zeal that the first century church had, mm -hmm. um, and that if we didn't recapture that, that we were going to be dismissed as basically a social club. Mm -hmm. And it seems like that has been what the church has relegated itself to um, in these times, unfortunately. It doesn't mean they're not individual churches here and there, but I'm saying collectively, um, we have not even stepped into a little bit of who we are and our authority in Christ. Um, and so I'm, I'm praying about that because when I look at our world, uh, there's a desperate need for that kind of spiritual leadership. I think that's what my father provided mm -hmm. in his time period. I think that's what your father was doing uh, during his life. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we just, we need it. The void, it's, it's a serious void right now in the earth in terms of leadership, period. Um, and, um, you know, we need to pray about that, 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 uh, whew, that God would um, really touch some hearts and minds to awaken themselves to their responsibility um, today, especially because we're so divided, we're so polarized. Um, and it's not just politically, it's, 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 it's in all yeah, respects. Across yeah, the board. Uh, across the board, generationally. I mean, we're just like, there's so much friction and so much tension. Mm -hmm. Um, and we just need that, that voice and direction today um, in the earth to get us on track. Because we're way on track. Wow. Yeah. You bless me. Yeah. You bless me. Um, I'm good. That, that's enough to get me through this day. Yeah. And it's a challenge in there. Um, when you talk about us getting a position, mm -hmm. I got to get a position. There, there are. And, and, and I've got to get in position to help others get in position. Mm -hmm. You know, growing up in it, and we got to get out of our feelings, and we got to get out of being concerned of, well, what's for me? The kingdom is for me. Just walk in it, and all that other stuff, it's, it's just going to fall in line. And so I needed to hear that. Mm -hmm. I needed to hear that. Thank you. Um, while we're in this moment, I, I, I just want you to just pray. I just want you to pray for the city. Um, I just want you to pray a, a release. Because what your dad spoke was timeless. In the beginning was the Word. The Word became flesh and it dwelt among us. And he spoke some things that still need to dwell among us. That it won't return back to eternity void. So I just want you to release that. So, Father God, we just uh, look to you now, and we thank you first for being God. We thank you for your sovereign, your sovereign grace, your sovereign mercy, Lord God. We just, we thank you for your supremeness. And Lord, I, I ask now from this place called Atlanta, Georgia, ATL, that you would begin to rebirth um, people who, like my father, were called um, to bring freedom in this, in this world. There's so many people that are locked up and entangled in so many different situations and circumstances. So many of us are entangled in systems and structures and institutions, Lord God, and situations, Lord God. And so I ask right now that you would bring the spirit of freedom into the atmosphere that we might be freed from those things Lord God and that we might be uh, operating in the spirit of Christ there is a need like never before uh, for the spirit of Christ to manifest itself in the earth the spirit of Christ that walks in that unconditional love that I talked about earlier Lord God we need that in this time like never before. There's so much hate right now, um, not just in this city, but across this nation, Lord God. And so we just ask that you would touch hearts and touch minds like never before, God. You know um, who you have called and anointed for this time. And I pray, Lord God, that they would rise up, that they would rise up collectively, Lord God. I pray for a mighty army, Lord God, to step forth 
forward even now mm -hmm. in spite of what resistance that people might feel in the atmosphere Lord God we come against that spirit of resistance in the name of Jesus Lord God and we just ask that you just begin uh, to cause these men and women uh, to be released and, and to step forward and to take uh, their rightful place and position, Father God, that they might lead us into knowing and understanding our kingdom citizenship and our kingdom authority, Lord God. Yes, we are citizens of this great nation, and we don't take that for granted. We don't take that light lightly, and we appreciate it, Lord God. But, Lord, more importantly, we are citizens of the kingdom of God, Father God, and we need uh, your generals right now to come forward and to lead us into understanding that and operating in that, Lord God. And we thank you for it right now. We love you for it. We appreciate for you. We appreciate you for it, Lord God. And we just celebrate you on this day that you sent to us uh, a prophet by the name of Martin Luther King Jr. His yes. words will still, will still resonate and they will come to pass because they originated from you. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name is my prayer. Hallelujah. 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 It goes up. Listen, if that ain't lit, that don't get your engine running, I don't know what will. Be a king. There is a kingdom inside of every last one of us. It's time to go up, y'all. It's not a time to take off. This is a time to put on. Fam, I'm so excited that you came through to hang out with us this night and this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm excited to be with you Saturday, Monday. Um, you're doing something you didn't have to do. You could have said, you know what? I'm just going to ride off into the sunset, live a good life, and keep it moving. <laughs> I remember I was watching Boondocks one time, and it was a little parody about your dad. He said, I, I'm going to Canada. <laughs> they never should have let you Negroes free. But you chose to stand instead and continue running. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank thank you. you for standing. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes, ma'am. We good. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we back in the music. Listen, check the website, thekingcenter.org, King for more information. The full calendar is listed. Turn up, y'all. It goes up. Be a king. Chia. Chia.